Uh, it's been a while since I've actually looked at this one, so it's going to jump through all the place occurrences. And actually, no, this is creating its own separate place. So you can use this. This is actually a local local um, floating point <coughs> variable inside of here. So, And here it is actually right below it, <laughs> if I would have paid attention. Um, I've set it to 1 here. So basically, I'm determining where he's going to position in his placement. And if you look down here, you actually see there's different placements. I had to do this too because sometimes the stuff would spawn and it would be in the funky looking places. It would be either below the ground. It it wouldn't be right. So I kind of played with it a little bit. This one's the height. This is the uh, the above the ground. Make sure he stays above the ground. And I just have it defaulted right now. This is uh, an interesting one. This is a color index uh, class. This is the class. And this is the actual... The, um, the thing that goes with this class, and again, I'm probably not explaining that correctly, but this is going to actually be set for this class, and it's going to be assigned to this variable. So whenever you use this, it will sign whatever's inside this class. And if you hold it over here, you can see the type scripting for it. And this is the color. I just set it for a blip color three. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I didn't use this one in here, but I'll kind of go down through here. Set written, set network ID exists on all machines. This will make sure that your um, the ID is able to work in multiplayer. So it's going to basically look at every single, every little object that's appearing in network player, so it can grab whatever's in there. If that kind of made sense, probably didn't, but sorry. <laughs> um, there's a switch here. Switch is actually um, interesting. It's actually a, almost like the condition statement when you have, for example, the if statement. The switch works the same way, except it actually doesn't allow you choices. It's it's very sequen sequential or however you set it up. In this case, I have it set up for one, two, and three and four. So I have four different places I'm switching to. And this of course just determines the type of the switch. And again this is C++. If you don't know it, you know, research switch, you'll probably understand a little bit more how it works. But it's just basically jumping back and forth here based on whatever SP type is. And SP type down here, which I'll probably explain later, is being incremented. So it's changing that way it'll go through two, three, four, all the way through the one. And I actually have it set up to to trigger these for specific things. So this next thing is uh, get character coordinates, and actually I'm going to skip this. This is just for the vehicle, the object. We want to focus on the pad. This could probably be in another video, but this is they're all doing the same thing. They'll get coordinates, and the only thing difference you'll see the crate. This has create card. This has create object. This has create character, and of course create character is the pad itself. So that's the one we're going to focus on. Uh, get character coordinates. You might be familiar with that already. That's just getting where his position is. Get character height above ground. This one is kind of new. This is supposed to position where he's going to be placed above the ground. And I use this a lot to make sure I get a, a good approximation based on the physics of the game. And you, I also did this to try to make him appear like he was dropping. And you'll notice when you spawn a pad in my game, he falls on top of you. You've probably seen that happen in various mods. This is why, because you're changing the height position. And this one right here, of course, as I mentioned earlier, this is the character, and rather than using the others, we're going to start with character. Um, the first thing you're going to be doing, if you go over here again, remember this little shortcut? When you hold it over here, you're going to be able to see what it does. The first uh, occurrences is uh, 3, and I um, can't remember what the 3 is for, but this is actually um, determining the model. So this is actually based on this up here earlier where we were where you saw the model, it's going to load in the model and it's going to place it in character. So now it's looked in the memory and says, okay, which model exists? Can you put that in there for me, please? And then it's X and I've kind of moved the Y a little bit over to kind of move him over. I was trying to make it so he wouldn't fall on top of the player. So I've got him now where he doesn't, he used to actually fall on top of the player, but now he kind of appears beside him because I pushed him over too. If you take this out he'll with this too and do something like this, he'll actually end up falling on top of your player every time he spawns. So I just kind of leave it back in there. There we go. And then the Z, of course, is self-explanatory up and down. Last pad. This one I actually have it set up to look for the last object, last pad. And I also have one here for the last car. So it's basically looking in memory, where is the last person? And you could do a lot of different things with this. You can change it since this is an actual address. And it's actually looking in memory to see where this um, um, hash address is actually stored. And true means you want to be able to create a pad, so you just set it to true. And pet spawn, this one I actually created myself. This is an actual variable. And this one might throw people a little bit, but if you look here, pet spawn, pet spawn 100. Now, I probably won't have to go back to it, but I think I will just for keepsake so that people can kind of follow what this logic is doing. So, again, I'm going to go over here and do my favorite thing. There we go. Okay, and this is actually going to jump back and forth through the code. 
I gotta watch myself on these timers too, because um, these uh, videos only limit to 10 minutes, which kind of stinks. So I think I've got uh, let's see, got a few more minutes here. So I'll kind of jump back and forth as quickly as I can here and kind of cut this one a little short. But basically, it's um right here it is. This is where it first creates it. It's always at the beginning. I have it set up for global. Notice these are all global when they're appearing at the beginning like this. These are actually global right here. So if we go back down here, you'll see pet spawn 100. I just have it set up for 100 placement so that it knows we're in memory. It has enough room to store the number of objects that I'm coming on. So this is basically an object being stored inside the variable I created called pet spawn. And I got this from somebody else that actually showed me how to do those. So go back down here and it's going to take whatever's there, store the pet num, and if you look down here, would I have it down here or I had it up here somewhere? The pet num is it's used actually in another place in the game. It actually keeps track of which pet we're at. Are we at one, two, three, or four? And again, the integer will tell you which one we're at. And store it in last pet. So this is going to keep track of your pet. And I actually did this so I could delete my pets later which I still have some issues with that. I'm still trying to work on <laughs> some of my deletion. It's still not very accurate, but I'm still working to correct that. But this is basically what this doing is, as you've already seen, it's actually gonna create the pad. Now let's go back down to my other routine here. Where was I? I was in, uh, I wanna lose myself here. I think I was at, uh, right here. Here we go. Back down here. So this is basically taking everything inside Spawn Global, moving it inside of here. Now this three, I might have you might have missed this earlier, but if you go back over here, you'll see SP type. Remember SP type earlier? I'll go back and show you. Now I know I'm gonna get cut short on this one. Let's go back to where it was. If I had to split this up in two parts, I think I probably will. That would probably be the best thing to do here so I don't overextend the videos as YouTube does not like that. So I'm going to, I've only got like a minute left here, but basically I'll go back here and look for the SP type. And the SP type right is right here. So basically it's saying, which one are we? Are we a vehicle? Are we an object? Are we a pad? So let's go back down. Pad list. This three means it's actually, if you go back here, remember three. Let's go back up. Go back down, do the list. Three means it's a pad. I have it actually set up for a comment, vehicle, object, pad. So it's basically saying we found the pad in memory and to go ahead and use the pad spawn global option, which I created myself, of course, which I think is kind of cool. And let's go back to where my thing went. I think I just added an next one. There we go. Okay, and then that's what this is going to do. This is going to keep track of how many pads you've spawned. So I did pad num plus plus. And this is going to say now spawning pad, and I explained this probably in the last one, but this is the integer, and this is the string, and this is actually using this. This is going to print out how many pads you've spawned, and this will print out the number one. It will say now spawning number one, two, or how many you've got, and then now spawning number one, comma, and this right here is actually going to show the pad name. So it actually works and pulls memory side that character list we had earlier. It's going to pull and print the name of that pad that we just printed to the screen or that we just um, pulled out of the array there. And this, of course, this is going to print this message to the screen. This changes the color of the screen, and this just prints out a different message for the, the color itself. And I just did this just for some fancy stuff, stuff I was kind of working on. I could go in a little bit more. This keeps track of the maximum pads. This one is actually used inside of another routine I use, and it says here keep track of which item is currently being viewed, because I have a view ped list now where you can cycle through how many peds you've spawned and which one you want to delete, and I was still working on perfecting that. So basically, this is what it's doing. It's taking this list ped and it's storing it down in here, actually under ped num. Actually, this is stored elsewhere, but this is actually used for, and here's my example, spawn list pad one IG Anna. So this is what this is going to do. It's going to hold Anna inside of an array. And that's kind of the basics for right now. I'm going to go ahead and cut this short because I know these videos are limited. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Um, let me know what you think. Thank you.